helping us help you. Do you have a rack extension or a VST and you want to use it from your net to panorama but you know nothing about mappings? Well, don't fear, help is here. Just to clarify, this video is not going to teach you about the nitty gritty of the net to mappings. It's not going to even teach you about any remote coding. Wait, wait. It will show you what we need in order to create your mappings for you. So let's jump into the deep end of what I need from you and then I will go through how to get that information and the sort of decisions that you will have to make. We need a tab delimited file from you which contains all the controls that need to be mapped. Also in this file we need the manufacturer, the model, the friendly model name and the master volume control. This can come in, they call it all different things from master volume to main volume to master vol. So if you can find out what that control name is, because as default, we always map that to fader nine. The next set of information we need is, it comes across in four columns. First one being the page name. And this is what we use to sort of navigate around the nectar with. Next bit will actually be the control name itself. And then we need a eight character label. And that's for use for the data encoders to the, the right hand side of the screen. And then we need a, a four character label, which is used for the faders and the upper encoders. Also, we need things uh, you know, like mapped into banks of eight, because obviously we've only got eight encoders, eight faders, eight upper encoders. However, on some screens it doesn't make sense to map out all eight controls, you know, like to the nectar. So in this section down here, you can see that we've only actually mapped out four of the controls and we've got four blank. And to make them blank on the nectar screen, you just put in a zero. Now, if you uh, got Excel, you can obviously do this in Excel as well. Um, so the advantage of Excel is you've got the columns to work directly in and it, it just makes it a lot easier to do it with. So really, this is all we are after. And, you know, that is it from the kind of file format we would like from you. Now, that is a very good question. So let's see, where do we find these controls? Okay. What you need is obviously a, a rack extension or a, a VST up. Make sure it's obviously got the focus. And then under file, there's a lovely option new to a 9.5, which is export device remote info. Just click on it and click save. Obviously remember where you're saving it to. Now, this file has a lot of information in it. Don't open it in Notepad or, or a basic um, editor. If you do, it's the output's just sort of garbled and, and it makes it so hard to read. It's just not, not worth it. So use something like Notepad Pro. Um, what I tend to use, and it, it's the best way of uh, the format of it, is Excel, because it automatically pumps everything into our separate columns. Um, and it's just an easy to, way to whiz round. So if you remember rightly what I said uh, just previously, there's a few bits of data that we uh, like to have at the top. So let's go and fill them in first. Um, so we've got our manufacturer, the model, and we wanted the friendly model name. So I'm going to call that blue and an II, or blue two. And the next thing is going to be the master volume. Ah, very lucky, we seem to have it here. Now, how do we know that really is the master volume and not a volume for an oscillator. Okay, more than likely it would be called something like oscillator A volume if it was an oscillator. But how can we double check? Okay. If we open up the VST and click on the remote, this is equivalent to going into a rack extension, really right clicking and going into the edit um, remote override parameters. We can uh, go to say this is going to be my master volume, click on it, and it brings up that screen what you should be used to seeing. And sure enough, there is the name volume. So I definitely know I've got the right um, parameter name here. So I'm going to bung that up the top. These bits of information, absolutely useless. 
So I'm just going to delete that out. And as I say, the next part, if you remember rightly, what we need to do is set ourselves up uh, four columns, which will, will go into the page name. And if this is, I call it control, it's really, we're after the parameter. Um, an eight letter uh, character and uh, a four letter, four letter character. What am I saying? A four letter label. Um, now, sometimes I work backwards. And what I mean by backwards is rather than go and find out all these exact names, I may start working on a bit of a layout. So I'll actually work on the labels first by saying, okay, we've got ourselves an on-off um, button here. We've got ourselves obviously a wave if it's um, free running, invert, keyboard tracking. And so we've got a few other things there. So rather than going maybe hunting for them, I might actually start just setting my layout first of how this is gonna start appearing on the screen. Now, what's, um, interesting is you may not find all the options have been mapped out um, on some VSTs I think with the, the RP stuff that every single control I think really has been mapped out um, but some other v, um, VSTs like I've done the Korg M1 and out of the hundreds of parameters really you could change in the VST there was only a handful it really was it, it, it was down to something like 40 odd parameters it was uh, probably one of the smallest mappings i've done in a, a very very long time um and the names i'm going for i'm actually picking the names off the screen so rather than going so this these controls might be called os a ratio i'm not going to call it os a ratio in here my page name is going to be called os a so that tells everybody where they're actually viewing on the the, the nectar that is the page we're on, and I'm going to call it uh, PG1 or P1, P1, I'll go for P1. Um, and so I'm going to need one more on this. So there we go, so there's, there's a bank of eight. And so really, I'm, I'm now starting already on my second page. And again, I'm just going to sort of carry on. Um, the difference being, when you count up the controls, in fact, on this particular one here, I think there's like 19 controls. Well, when you divide that by eight, obviously eight, you get to 16, so that means there's gonna be a few hung over. Um, then you start to group them up. So I'm actually gonna put these three controls together and these three controls together, and I'm gonna leave a space, and I'm gonna put these on a separate page. So again, all I'm gonna do is so semi fine and sub. So semi fine and sub. We've got another shape down there. Did I put shape early? I did. Oh, look, we've got two shapes. Okay, so they're on different pages. So we, we might have to identify we've got a shape mode here, and obviously this is the shaping amount. So we, we might want to change one of them, but at the moment I'm just going to leave it. But these are the sort of decisions, decisions even, you've got to, um, you've got to make. And what I actually said was, I was going to leave that blank. So I'm going to have three controls, blank, three controls, and a blank. And, it, and this is the hard bit. This, and it takes ages trying to work out what should go on what page. And so like we're here, do we go one, two controls, three, four, or is it one, two, three, and then four and five? You know, you sort of, sometimes you have to just do it and then have a play with it and see how it feels, does it work, doesn't it work. Um, and yeah, and that's, that's really it really, and you carry on and on. Okay, so now we could start taking, obviously the control parameters and start to fill in. We can start to fill in what's, what's on this side. Um, and I'm gonna go through all these, so we've got tuning. Tuning, I think, happens to be the semi, as I say, we're not too sure. We can go on here, we can click on that, and it comes up, yeah. So tuning is to do with the, uh, the semitones, as we more know it as. So that there, control there, whoops. Let's just do a copy and paste. There we go, so we've got that up there. So right, I'm gonna go through and uh, fill these in, and then I'm gonna come back to you in a second once that's done. Okay, so welcome back. Um, I've uh, completed uh, a, a, my first three pages. 
And um, what I'm going to do in a minute is um, actually get these mapped out and get them working in within Blue. But as I say, I don't have to have all my pages mapped out to actually start uh, prototyping this and uh, seeing how this is actually going to work and all the rest of it. But let's go ahead and let's see uh, what it does look like with the final result. Okay, so here are the mappings. Uh, sorry about the uh, shaky camera. Um, you can see what we've done on the screen. We can see how it looks actually on the, uh, the, the panorama as well. Um, obviously, I've, I've got my keys which I can sort of bank through. So we can see, um, obviously, these ones where there's blanks. And that's where we have our zeros. And that's how it's going to look like on the screen. And we've got another screen here. And you can see where the, the blanks are. Okay. And then obviously we've got ourselves a fade, a fade of view, so we can see how it's going to map out, and you can see where the blanks are on there for their particular screens. Again, you know, if you look at the top, this is how we, we, we've done the menus here. So this tells you the fader menu over the other side. It's showing you the knob menu as well. Um, obviously we've got the blue two in the middle, which we sort of put at the very top of the script. Um, And there's not really much more to say. So on that side there, so you can see it saying oscillator one, um, P one as well at the top, and obviously the buttons at the bottom are referring to the, the page names. So that's why we like to keep that short. So really, this uh, concludes this sort of presentation. Um, obviously, the final thing to do is obviously get them files back over to us at Reason Talk, and um, we're obviously turn them into mappings and uh, hope the community uh, appreciates all the uh, work that goes into it. So, uh, happy mapping! <laughs>